Hello, this is Daniel Schaefer with Force Power Studio is here doing our second video tutorial ever. And I was on my YouTube channel today and I was looking at my some of my old effects and I realized that I had promised a subscriber of mine, AO Jam, that I would do a fireball tutorial once I got my MacBook. Well, I've had my MacBook for a while and I haven't done it yet, so I'm lacking lacking behind. So, AOL Jam, this one's for you. Let's get into it. Now, let's take a look at what we're going to be doing. That's that's the fireball effect that we're going to be doing today that you're going to be learning. So, let's go into the project where I already have my footage set up and we'll drop it into the new composition with a new composition button right here and you can instantly see that the quality of this window is not the same quality as this window. This window is much wider, this window is much shorter. That's because I have the composition settings in a different preset. So I go from custom all the way down to NTSC D1 widescreen square pixel. <sighs> wow, that's a mouthful. So. That's what I use, and instantly becomes widescreen. But it doesn't quite fit in the comp right, so that's a quick way to fix that. Just click and drag, and there you go. You've made it widescreen. And now that you've made it widescreen, you're ready to make your fireball effect. I have brought, I'm going to bring in some stuff from Video Copilot's Action Essentials 2 package, um, Torch. Windy 2 and Torch Turbulent 3. So let's just focus on the Turbulent right now. Bring the Turbulent up about right here and then just kind of make it smaller. Uh, you can put it wherever you want, right there. Right there looks fine. And so now we're going to go to the Windy and basically do the same thing. Just put it right Let's see, you can kind of see it's about the same size, so just put it on it. Let's um let's put the windy on top of the turbulent and see how that looks. There, that looks awesome. Well, it, I I guess you just you just made your fireball. There we go. My name is Daniel Schaefer. This is Force Power Studios. <laughs> no, no, I'm just kidding. We're, we're going to finish up the effect. So, now that you've gotten your basic fireball fire outline, your fireball needs a core. So, let's see. Hide all those. Go to Layer, New, Solid, and type in Core. C-O-R-E, Core. Hmm. I think I've said that in another tutorial. Anyway. Click OK and go to Effect, Noise and Grain, Fractal Noise. And um, Fractal Noise is a really awesome effect that you use. You will always use it in After Effects um, for a lot of different tutorials. So it's you should get to know this effect. You should get to un, uh, understand and know this effect very well. Uh, we're going to leave the Fractal Type at Basic and we're going to take the contrast up to about 300 and turn the brightness down to negative 10. Uh, complexity is fine. Um, let's make the comp about two seconds long. Yeah, two seconds long should be fine. Um, then we'll turn our evolution to, we'll tr uh, give our, uh, man, I just cannot talk today. Um, all day I've just been stumbling over my words and it's, it's a pain. Yeah, I, your brain wants to say something, but your mouth doesn't want to. Your mouth doesn't want to comply with your brain, and then it's just like a battle between your brain and your mouth. And sometimes your mouth starts mouthing off to your brain, and sometimes your brain just starts thinking horrible thoughts about your mouth, like letting it on fire. And man, it's been like that all day. So set a keyframe at the very beginning of the comp, and I'll uh, put mine to about three, just because that's what I did last time. I'll put it about to, mm, I'll say, three and a half. 
So, actually, let's see, what I put it at? I don't know. Huh. Oh, I put it at six and a half. Huh. Wow, that's that's embarrassing. Couldn't remember what I said. Anyway, it's basically just trying to figure out how fast you want your fire to be animating at, your core fire to be animating at. And, well, I already had mine preset, so half of a revolution is 180, and so it should animate fairly nicely. So let's just go and color correct it. Um, there, you could do it with curves, you could do it with levels, but I like to do it with color balance just because I understand percentages pretty well, and this is all about percentages. See, 100%, negative 2%, 69%, 69%. Yeah, just happened to land there. So, brings all the reds up, bring all the blues down. That'll give you a very nice fire color effect. And so now that you've got all of your fire effect, it animates and everything, now you want to go to effects and presets and type in CC Sphere, or in my case, CC Sf. CC Sf. It's a very awesome effect. I love CC Sf. Um, go to the light and bring the light height up to 100. Height, height, same thing. And turn the light color to a orangish, yellowish, colorish. It just depends on what you want to do. You, you could even turn it to a blue color. And then it like cancels out all the other colors and or you could turn it green. Then you could have like maybe like a green ball that like radiates magic and all the clouds. You could put this in like a crystal ball and it'd be kind of cool. But right now we're doing fire, so let's stick with fire. Click OK. And now you've got your basic fire core. So we're going to undo, going to uh, turn on all the eyeballs over here and let's let's turn the core to screen. Yeah, screen looks pretty good and turn the other two to screen as well. Now make sure your core is underneath your fire and then take your core and just shrink it down just a little bit actually a lot of it because it was like that big and now it's only that big so now you you're seeing it and you're like well that looks kind of good but the core the core just looks too round it looks too circular well we're going to take care of that too Click the core layer and go to Effect, Distort, Turbulent Displace. And now it just kind of looks like a ball of mush if we solo it. Just like a ball, like a ball of mush. Let's zoom in on that. But what you want to do is you turn the amount up to 100%. Now it just looks more like a ball of mush. But turn the size down to 5. And there you can see you get a kind of a fiery effect on the complexity to two, you get even more effects, but uh, I usually use about two just because that helps with rendering time and it still looks pretty good. Um, turbulent displacement, I'd say um, go ahead and put an ev uh, put some evolution in the turbulent displacement, but for the sake of time, I'm not going to do that. Um, Alright, so let's unsolo that layer unsold the layer and there you've got a very good fireball effect but wait there's more uh, we're going to precompose all of this go to layer precompose okay and then it goes back to the original way it was so you could do this two ways you could either turn this to screen and that turn puts it back, or you could toggle the switches and click 
this button. It's called it's the collapse transformation button. It basically makes all of the effects that are in here work in here. And that's usually what I use so I, so everything gets put back into the original comp. Now we see our fire and it animates and it's really nice but it doesn't follow our hand so let's solo our main footage and bring up the go to window and bring out the tracker I already have the tracker out select the layer and then go to track motion all I gotta do is track one point at least for this because my hand really doesn't move a lot so let's just track my middle finger we'll increase the search area and we will make a new no object ha you thought I was going to analyze forward but in reality I was always planning to make a null object I tricked you there let's edit the target put it to the second null click OK and then analyze forward and it follows your finger pretty well and so it was only for that two seconds We'll click apply to the X and Y, of course. And now you have a null object that follows your hand perfectly. Well, if not perfectly, pretty darn close. So let's unsolo all this. We'll hide the null. Um, hmm. Now what is going Oh, they're both selected, huh? Wow, I feel, I feel silly. So, now that all this has, now the null is gone, let's parent the pre-comp to the null. So now, when we play it, the fire follows our hand. And that is just awesome. So, now that you've got this, it still kind of looks a little bit fake, so... Let's click our pre-comp, which is our fireball, and go to Effect, Stylize, Glow. And then you're like, well, Daniel, now it looks all cartoony. Well, that's right. It does look cartoony. Now let's do something about that. Let's take the glow radius and bump it up to about 100, maybe even more than that, maybe 120. Yeah, 120. And we'll take the glow intensity and we'll put it down to about 0 0.6. And for some reason, it still looks cartoony. Well, that's because the transfer mode has changed. Even though the collapse transformation is on, something is not right. I don't know what it is, but changing the transfer mode to screen fixes it. Or what you could do is you could put it to add. Add works pretty good too. I just kind of like screen, but we'll leave it for add on right now. And there's a couple th more things you could do. Like you could add a heat haze because it's fire and it's really hot, or you can add a glow to your hand that follows your hand and it kind of flickers, showing that the fire is like actually kind of there. It makes it feel more realistic, but for the sake of time, I'm not going to do that because there are so many tutorials on the internet that shows you how to do a heat haze and so many tutorials that shows you how to do a light on the hand that I'm just not going to waste your time, I'm not going to waste my time teaching you something that you more than likely already know how to do. But anyway, that is your basic fireball effect. Let's take a final look at it. Wait for it to render. There we go. There is your basic fireball effect. I'm Daniel Schaefer, and this is Force Power Studios. We'll be seeing ya.